on your left. So when they needed us, we could fight the battles. That they never could. Welcome back, everyone. I've gotten a lot of requests to do a new video for Marvel and Black Panther. I wanted to wait a little while to talk about the future of the Black Panther movies in Black Panther 2 after it had been announced that Chadwick Boseman passed away just to pay him the proper respect and honor his life. I posted a couple tribute videos and a lot of you had been asking me Black Panther 2 questions, what Marvel is going to do given how surprised and shocked everyone was with what happened. So I'll explain what they're doing right now. And on the other side of that, I'll explain what Marvel is definitely not going to do because there's been all kinds of speculation in the past week, just given how serious this has all been. May he rest in power. But the Black Panther character in the Black Panther franchise was very important to Chadwick Boseman's in real life. So I'll address how Marvel is going to handle that going forward. But the big stuff, if you didn't hear the news last week, Ryan Coogler, the director of the Black Panther movies and someone who was personally very close to Chadwick Boseman and Kevin Feige both issued very respectful, very touching statements honoring Chadwick Boseman's life and accomplishments. Not just what he did in the Marvel movies, but what he did in real life in his other work. If you haven't seen Chadwick Boseman's other non-Marvel movies, he's fantastic in everything that he does, so be sure to check those out. He's played many iconic, fictional, and real-world historical heroes. But while they were doing that last week, they also revealed that they personally did not know about his condition. He had chosen to keep that secret from most of the people he had worked with the past couple of years since he found out he had been diagnosed with stage 3 cancer in 2016. That was around the time the Captain America Civil War was happening, right after he had just started to play Black Panther. He took it all like a champ. He spent all of his time between all of these movies undergoing intensive cancer treatments and surgeries. And when you rewatch him during the Black Panther movie, Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, he looks amazing. You wouldn't think that anything was wrong with him just to see him like that. But this past year, his condition took a turn for the worst, and he still did appear in a recent Spike Lee movie earlier this year. But when he posted a video of himself looking extremely thin, it was clear that something was not right. But here's the thing. His family said that even just a week before he passed away, he was convinced that he was going to beat cancer and be able to start production on Black Panther 2 in the spring next year. He was convinced that he'd be able to gain all that weight back and get in shape in time to start the movie. They said he was so optimistic that it was going to be another amazing movie, just like the first Black Panther movie, which is inspiring. So as a result of that, though, both Ryan Coogler, who's still writing Black Panther 2 right now, and Kevin Feige's people at Marvel didn't have any kind of alternative plan for Black Panther 2 in place. They were also expecting Chadwick Boseman to come back as T'Challa and hit another home run again for the sequel. So one of the first things I saw a lot of you asking questions about on my tribute video last week was whether or not Marvel was planning on canceling the Black Panther 2 movie and just not doing it at all. And right now I can say that's not going to happen for a number of reasons. The first one and probably the biggest one being that Chadwick Boseman himself said that when he first took the role as Black Panther, he just thought it'd be a cool character and he'd enjoy working with Marvel just like he enjoys working with all of his collaborators on other movies that he does. At least at first, he wasn't really thinking about what Black Panther the character meant to people all over the world or what it could mean. Then when they were getting ready to release the movie and it turned into this big cultural phenomenon, it really hit him and he recognized the deeper meaning behind what they were doing and how important it was. This is actually a clip of him getting really choked up talking about it, working with little kids who themselves were suffering from cancer. He did a lot of cancer charities, so he got to meet a lot of these children who were looking forward to the Black Panther movie coming out, and it meant the world to them. Throughout our filming, I was communicating with them, um, knowing that they were both terminal. And, and what they said to me is, and their parents said, they just, they're trying to hold on till this movie comes. Mm. And I, to a certain degree, you hear them say that and you're like, whew, like, wow, that's like, I gotta get up and, I gotta get up and go to the gym. I gotta get up and go to work. Um, you know, I gotta learn these lines. I gotta work on this accent. Uh, you know, seeing how devoted all of my castmates are 
and knowing that 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 will be something meaningful f- to them but it's to a certain degree it's, it's a humbling experience because you're like this can't mean that much to them you know but seeing how the world has taken this on seeing how the movement is how it's taken on a life of its own i realized that they anticipated something great and um i think back now to a kid and just you know uh waiting for christmas to come waiting for my birthday to come mm. uh, waiting for a toy that was going to that i was going to get a chance to experience or a video game i did live life waiting for those moments mm. and so it put me back in the mind of being a kid just just to experience those two little boys um anticipation of this movie and when i found out that they <sighs> yeah it's it's it means a lot so watching him get choked up there, you also have to remember that while he was doing this, working with those little kids who were themselves suffering from cancer, he was also suffering from stage three cancer. So Marvel recognizes how much the Black Panther franchise means to everyone and how much it meant to Chadwick Boseman. They're not going to end that. Chadwick Boseman wouldn't want them to stop making Black Panther movies. But everything that they've said and that Ryan Coogler has said since he passed away has been that they want to be as respectful as possible and honor his memory the best way that they can. So that's why Marvel is not going to recast the T'Challa Black Panther character. Chadwick Boseman will always be the T'Challa of the MCU the same way that Robert Downey Jr. will always be the Tony Stark of the MCU. You probably see where I'm going with this. Mantles are passed down in the comics. Wholesale identities are not. The clear path forward is to pass the mantle of Black Panther and the throne of Wakanda to T'Challa's heir apparent. Shuri is the heir apparent. Also in real life, Marvel just recently made all the Black Panther comics where Shuri takes the mantle of Black Panther free for download. But what is that story and how do they address Chadwick Boseman passing away, T'Challa passing away so soon after Avengers Endgame when they all just came back, snapped back by the Hulk's Infinity Gauntlet? You don't send a champ and a king like Black Panther out with a couple lines of dialogue. It has to be something epic. It has to have deep ramifications to the universe. And if we're talking about the MCU, the future Marvel movies, the other characters in the other movies like Thor, the other surviving Avengers have to feel the weight of it. The two most common ways that you do this are one with a new big bad, which is the more obvious choice. And one of the more respectful but epic ways to do that would be to tie it to the debut of a major new X-Men or Fantastic Four villain like Namor or Doctor Doom. Early speculation, but T'Challa winds up passing away at the beginning of Black Panther 2 or preceding the events of the movie, defending Wakanda from an attack from one of these new villains. The second way that you can address his passing is the Avatar The Last Airbender way. If you haven't seen that series, it's one of the best series of all time. It's on Netflix. Please go watch it. But after the events of Avatar The Last Airbender, Aang wound up having a family with Katara but died at the relatively young age of 66. But because he'd been stuck in the ice for 100 years using the Avatar state to survive, he was really about 166 years old when he died. And the real reason why he passed away wasn't because of a big battle. It was just because of the physical stress of being in the Avatar state for such a long period of time, shortening his lifespan. So if there were ever an acceptable time to use old footage of Chadwick Boseman to T'Challa or reworking him to put him back in the movie, it would be to have Shuri speak to him, albeit briefly, inside the spirit world the way that he spoke to his father, King T'Chaka, after he had passed away. But one of the most important lines of dialogue that he has in any of the Marvel movies is in Captain America Civil War after his father dies, and this is very timely and relevant. He says that death is not the end in their culture. It's more of a stepping off point. But then what is the actual story of the Black Panther 2 movie if Shuri is taking the mantle and a major new X-Men or Fantastic Four villain is responsible for his death? Well, the basic premise of the movie would be mostly how Shuri and the rest of the Marvel characters deal with the tragedy of his death and Shuri learning what it means to be the Black Panther and what it means to be Queen of Wakanda. So you're introducing all this new MCU X-Men Fantastic Four canon and you're also spinning on some of the things that they did during the first film with Shuri's character. And like I said, they've actually just done a version of this in another Marvel movie. If it wasn't clear, Shuri in the MCU is the exact same age as Peter Parker, Spider-Man. 
The same thing just happened to him in Spider-Man Far From Home. He had to deal with the death of Iron Man, and Iron Man effectively passed the mantle to him via the glasses. But everyone let me know in the comments, how do you want Marvel to handle Chadwick Boseman's passing during Black Panther 2? And of course there would be an epic Stan Lee tribute to him at the beginning and the end of the movie during the credits. The Stan Lee opening credits were kind of comedic because Stan Lee's cameos were all very comedic. The one that they would do for Chadwick Boseman would be much more serious and in the tone of a Black Panther character. Everyone be sure to pay him tribute in the comments, may he rest in power. You can click here for both of my Chadwick Boseman tribute videos too. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, I'll see you guys tonight.